Hello, Mike here again from Scratch, and today you're actually going to be hearing from someone different than me. Uh, we're actually doing a guest collaboration with uh, Nathan from the excellent GD Quest channel. Now, if you haven't uh, already checked out GD Quest, it's a great place for other good tutorials as well as uh, tutorials on other assets such as uh, creating art using the Create to Open Source application. He's also a contributor to the documentation team for Godot, really knows his stuff. Uh, and today what we're doing is we're checking out how to create tools, uh, tool scripts directly in Godot. Um, now, I've also done a post on his channel so if you want to hear more from me head on over there and check it out I will link it in the comments down below I hope you enjoy this I hope you do check out his channel and I hope you also find this all very useful I will see you all later to get started I invite you to download the project you'll find a link in the video description right now we have two characters in the level scene if it's not open I invite you to open it which patrol from their starting position to a point we define with a variable. We want to draw the path, the patrol distance in the viewport. To do this, we're going to use the tool mode. Click on the script icon next to one of the NPCs to open the corresponding script. And let's write tool at the top. You've seen the characters walk already and the code is self-contained. So one funny thing we can notice if I close and reopen the level is the characters patrol just like they would in the game. Every time you restart the scene, it's randomized because there's some random generation in the code. Just to show you that you can run anything in there. The characters change position right now because of the script. And if we were to save, it would save their current position into the scenes. So it can really mess up your levels. That's why you don't want to run all the code in there, but draw helpers hints to help you design your levels. So let's go back to the script tab, expand it, and we'll start with controlling the code that runs. Let's go down to the physics process function. That's the one that gets called on every tick. And we don't want to run it if we are running the code from the editor. To check for this, we use an if statement. And in the engine singleton, we have the editor hint variable. If it's set to true, it means we are in the editor right now, in which case we can return from the function. It will prevent the code from running. There's another method with which we have to do this here. So, so copy the two lines and scroll down to change state. You can see in this one, we have two calls on the animation player. It can switch to the idle and walk animations. The change state method gets called from a few places. So when we enter it, we want to make sure that we are running the game and not running from the editor. So the same condition will work well for us. Now you can fold everything. I've set this to shift alt F. Now, if you go back to the scene, the characters will not move anymore. You may have to close it and reopen it, but this should work. Now we are ready to draw the path the characters follow. For this, we have to use a function, a method that's available on all canvas item objects. It's called draw with a leading underscore to indicate it's virtual. It's available on all the nodes that inherit from canvas items. So everything that has to do with the interface and all the 2D nodes. This lets us draw 2D shapes with a large set of functions. If we go to the canvas item class, you can see them all. In the public methods, you have a group of draw circles, lines, multi-lines, etc. So you can draw a lot of geometric shape. In this one, we just want to draw a line from the character's spawning position to the point it's going to patrol to. For this, we can use the draw line function. This function starts with the spawn position of the line, its starting point. We're going to use an empty vector to set it at zero, zero, because everything we draw is relative to the nodes. It's going to start at the character's position. Then we need the lines and position. At the start of the script, you have a vector called patrol vector. It defines the distance and direction in which the character is going to move. That's the one we'll use. Then we need a color. We have a few ways to create a color using the color constructor. 
For one, you can use RGB values, with floating point values between zero and one. So for white, you type 1.2 three times, but you can use hex values just like you would in CSS or on the web, which is a bit more convenient. For that, you type a string, you can use a leading hash, and for white, you need six Fs. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is going to give us white. Finally, we need the lines width. I recommend going with two at least because one pixel can be a bit small, especially when you zoom out on the level. You can also anti-alias the line if you want to do this for presentation or to use the drawing functions in game. With this, we can save, go back to the scene. We'll have to reopen it in our case and you should see the patrol distance line drawn. This is quite nice already, but it has one limitation for now. If we change the patrol vector, the line does not update. The reason is the draw method gets called once when the game starts or when the scene is initialized. Now, uh, to update the drawing, you have to call the update method by yourself. Let's head back to the script tab. Now we want to update the drawing only when the patrol vector changes. For this, we are going to use a setter function. At the end of the line, the patrol vector definition, you should add set get. This keyword turns it into a variable that uses a setter and getter. And then we write the name of the function that's going to get called every time we change the patrol vector value. The convention here is to start with set underscore the name of the variable. This makes it easy to find the um, function in your script, especially if you have a lot of setters and getters. So copy this because we need to define this function. We'll do this right above the draw method. Add a new function with the name set patrol vector, and it must take an argument called value. The first thing you do in a setter is assign the value to the variable you are working with. So we'll set patrol vector to the value. This function is called every time we change the patrol vector value. So we can call the update method that's tied to the draw method. It's going to update the drawing. Note, if you want Godot to use the setter from within the script, you must use the self keyword before the variable. Let's say we wanted to change the patrol vector in change state, for example. We would have to write self dot patrol vector is equal to the new value. And it's only in this case that it will go through the setter function. If you only write patrol vector is equal to something, it's not going to work. However, if you change the value from the inspector, it's going to work no problem. Let's go back to the 2D view and try to change the patrol vector. Yeah, you can see the drawing now updates. Let's do one last thing. Add a circle to mark the end of the line. Go back to the script editor. We're going to use a very similar function. It's called draw circle. We need a position, a radius, and a color. So it's going to use the end of the patrol path as the circle center. Then we need a radius. Six pixels should be enough. And for the color, let's copy the white we have here. Save. Go back to the view and you'll see the circle at the end of the line. We have one last problem. If we try to play the game, what happens is we have the drawing in the view. We don't want that. So let's go back to the script tab. And this time we'll use the engine.editor hint value, but do the contrary to what we did before. If we have this value to false, we're going to return from the function. If editor hint is equal to false, it means we are running the code from the game. Play the game again, and you should not see the drawing anymore. You should just have the gameplay. Let's move to the second example, the bat. 
Press Ctrl Shift O to open the bat scene. Search for bat.tscn. This one moves along a sine curve and we want to draw the curve. If you go to the script, click on the script icon next to the bat object, expand the view. It's already set up for us. We have the setter, we have the editor hint condition. All we are missing is our drawing function. So let's add it at the bottom. Remember, it's underscore draw. And first of all, we want to not run it if the editor hint is equal to false. So if not engine.editor hint, return from the draw function. And then we can start drawing things inside of it. To draw a curve, you have to create an array of points. We are going to sample the points from our sine curve. We store them in an array and we're going to use that array to draw the curve. Signs cycle over time and in game we tend to use a time value to control them or to move along the sine wave. We're going to create a time step variable and step through time virtually to draw our curve. Let's start with a time step value, 0.02 seconds. The smaller the time step, the smoother the curve will be, but the more points you will need to generate a long path. Then we want to loop over a range of values. This is going to be the number of vertices in our path. We can use the range built-in method to generate an array of points and type something like 128. It should be a good count. The i, the index value here, is going to take all the values between 0 and 127 included, but not 128. This is what range will do. Now for each of the indices in the loop, we want to generate a point. Each point is going to be a vector 2. To sample that point from the curve, we need a time value. The time is going to be the index multiplied by time step. Then we can calculate the coordinates of the point. It's going to be a vector 2 and we'll reuse the equation the character follows from physics process. So the x position changes at a constant speed. It's going to be speed multiplied by time. And the y position follows the sine curve using the time multiplied by 10. Let's type sin of time times 10 multiplied by the sine amplitude value. With that, we want to create an array of points outside the loop. So right above our for statement, we'll want to create a new points array variable. It's going to be a pull vector to array. So an array of vector two values. Then just like with any array, we can append our point to it. So at the end of the loop, we should have an array of 128 points. With this, we can draw our curve. We have several options. The first one we'll look at, I quite like it. It's called draw multi-line. It's going to draw a set of lines, taking pairs of points every time, and you'll see the, the result is quite interesting. So we'll pass in our points array, followed by the color. We're going to use white again. Next up, it needs the line width. So you can see it's exactly like any of the line drawing methods. So let's save, go back to the view and look at what we get, a nice dotted path. This is really nice because it makes it easy to draw things like selection areas for your tools or things like these. And I think it can represent some paths quite nicely. Now, if you want a continuous curve, you can use instead the draw polyline function. Going back to the editor, if we change the sine amplitude, you should see the path drawing update because the code has been set up for this. And if we try out the scene, we should only get the bat flying around. There you go. It's all you need to get started drawing in the editor. Mike showed you, you can also create nodes, you can create plugins, run scripts in the editor. This is an extremely powerful system. 
even if you are working on a fairly short project, just a few weeks, it's often quite useful for level design. With the tool keyword alone, you cannot listen to input in your scripts. To do that, you'll have to create an editor plugin. However, you can do everything else like drawing, creating nodes, modifying nodes, etc. Have fun with that and see you soon for the next tutorial.